the foundation of marriage is very important in Islam. And we know preparation for marriage is the starting point for a family. And that is exactly where we get it wrong. We have to be frank with ourselves. You should expect what you planned. You cannot plan yam and say you want to harvest rice. And this is, I'm talking especially to our mothers. I hope we have some mothers here. Because sincerely, preparation for marriages are in the hands of the mothers. And they are the ones spoiling the families of their children. We have to be frank with ourselves. Our parents did not treat us that way. We claim to be civilized. We are living our roots. We are living our Islam, our deen. And when you leave Islam, when you leave the way things should be done, expect disaster. And that is where it is happening. This, we have to say it frankly to ourselves. Sincerely, we are busy preparing for weddings, and we are not preparing for marriage. Wedding takes only a day. After that preparation, after the spending of the money, unfortunately, some of us even borrow to stage a wedding. You want to be named as the most expensive wedding in Abuja or in Nigeria. It is happening. You borrow money and do it. And at the end, you put the life of your children in disaster. Please, if we want to get it right, we have to sincerely repent. Allah say, Ya ayu alazina amanu tubu ila lahi tawbatan nasuha. Sincerely, we have, let, we have angered our creator. And if we are really going to change, there's nothing wrong in doing the wedding, they do it Islamically. But where you do a wedding, you spend so much, you bring men and women, and the annoying part of it, you see the mother, the father, the children dancing together. Where is the Islam in us? And you want Allah to bless that wedding? Sincerely speaking, we have to change. And I know of a family where even the son say, I don't want that. The parents are insisting you must do it. In some wedding, you even see the, the couples will not be dancing. They will just stand there because they are so uncomfortable, maybe not to annoy their children, their parents. Although Allah say, what I want to Allah bury, you should only obey people or join together in what? In righteousness, not in disobeying Allah. But because maybe they just want to honor their parents, they just stand and you see the parents dancing in front of your in laws. Where is that taking us to? So, sincerely, that's where we are getting it wrong. I hope we are going to start changing from now. Let us do our wedding in such a way that there is no more mixing or too much bid'a that will bring the cost of Allah in our marriages. I pray that Allah will make it easy. But at the same time, please my sisters, it is his right to choose who you interact with. So don't say that, no, I must keep my friends. What do you mean? Before marrying me, you made me not male friends, even the female. Because maybe that your close friend, maybe I am your husband. And that may be disaster if she's not a sincere friend. She may be bringing problems to you, telling you lies so that the marriage will not last and she will step into your shoes. May we never get friends like that. So, my sisters, and then it is his right to teach you the deen. But please, if you will not teach her, then allow her to go and look for it because some men can be so self-centered. They will not teach you and they will not allow you to go and seek for Islamic knowledge. Please, marriage is a sunnah. Seeking for the deen is firm, is compulsory. So you can no forego your seeking for knowledge because of marriage. But at the same time, who are you going to seek the knowledge from? That is important. So he should, at least should be guided. And then also, it is his uh, right for you to obey him, to give him, his, to give him your time when he's in need of you. That is very, very important. Because that is what is bringing a lot of marriage, especially our working class. I learned that some of us now have timetable. No, today oh, I'm working. No, maybe it's only two or three times in the week that anything intimate can come between me and you because I'm so busy in the office. That is un Islamic. Please and please, your husband has right to your full time, and he too, you should also, he should do the same to you. You should be able to satisfy each other. 
both in love and comfort and then peace of mind. These are some of the few that I will talk about. What about the rights of the woman on the husband? Please, or the right of the husband. What, what is that? What am I saying? The, the right of the wife on the husband. Your rights, as I said, he should give you shelter, he should clothe you, he should feed you, he should look after your well being. Even if you are the richest woman on earth, he should feed you. Unless if you say, I've, for, I've, I've forgiven, I've, I've forgotten that, but he should give, but he should feed you according to his means. Where you feel that you cannot, man, he cannot maintain you on that level, then you can compliment. Also, it is your right for him also to satisfy your needs. So this is vice versa. You can, he cannot say, no, it's one way. It is only when I'm in need of you that you should be there for me. You too, when you are in need of your husband, he should be there for you. And also, it is his right, it is your right on him to also cater for all your things, including what? Basic needs. Don't go and put something that is beyond his level. At least I know some of us can be so demanding. So you have to do it according to Sharia. La you can live with nafsan, Allah Allah will not bother so more than what he can be. So you should not put a demand more than what he can do. So these are some of the few rights of the um, um, wife that I'm going to talk about. The issue of how often should you see before marriage. This thing has been overtaken by event now with this social media. It's so unfortunate. I know if, maybe it is fiscal scene that we are going to talk about. If it is fiscal scene, there is no limit but on what condition. Islamically, you are not supposed to be with your fiancé, you alone. If he's going to see you, he should come and seek permission, first of all, even from your parents. Asking for your daughter, I've seen your daughter and I want to marry. And where they have given him that permission, you are forbidden to any other man. You cannot run two boyfriends at the same time, unless if you terminate that relationship. And when he's supposed to see you, he should come to the house and see you. He will come to your house and your parents should give him an opportunity to be with you, but not just the two of you. Somebody that is mature, you know, a child that at least we know what is happening should be with you while you are talking to him. But is that what is happening now? No. You see that when you are dating, you go to a restaurant together, you are in the car together, you alone. And they say when you see two adults, a male and a female, a female together, the third person is the devil. So that's why we see a lot of crisis and that having illegitimate relationship that is happening. And always with the women we are at the receiving end. The moment you have given yourself away, the man will turn and then go and look for somebody else. So please, the scene should be the, it doesn't matter how many times, but it should be in your own house at the permission, with the permission of your parents. May Allah make it easy. And I hope our brothers are hearing, please stop taking advantage of our daughters and then do the proper thing. And as I'm saying, you know, before, during our time, there is no social media. Definitely when you are seeing a man, your parents will know. But now that even if you are in your house, you always communicate and you can do a lot of things that at least before it cannot be unheard of. But the important thing is that it takes Allah, whether your parents have seen what you are doing or not, Allah sees and we are going to account for our eyes, our ears and everything. May Allah make it easy. May we have blessed homes. May Allah bless all of you with wonderful and blessed homes and husbands and, and even wonderful children that you'll be proud of. For those of us that are having our husbands, we pray that Allah will give us a blessed uh, home where there will be filled of love, full of love, harmony, and then a lot of God-fearing children and relationship that will keep us going. Subhanakallahumma bihanja ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta. Astagafuqa wa atubu